Apple's Reminder app. Could you really live life without it? In this video, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to recreate Apple's Reminder app icon using only beginner level Swift UI shapes and layout. Let's get into it. All right, so we're starting with a blank Swift UI project. And instead of building it out all in this content view here, let's go ahead and create a new Swift UI file and call this Reminders App Icon. Hit resume to get the preview going. And we'll start out with the background of a rounded rectangle. And rounded rectangles all need a corner radius, let's say 20. And then give this a width of 100 and a height of 100. So instead of building this out actually with the device as the preview, we're gonna get rid of that and make it a little bit nicer going forward. So let's give this uh, reminders app icon view here. Also a width and height of 100. Let's put this in a Z stack. So you can hit command and then click on the view and then select whatever you want. Uh, we'll give the Z stack a width of 150 and a height of 150. Let's give it a different background color so we'll say color dot gray. And then for the preview layout will be size that fits. And that essentially gives us something that's a little bit easier to work with. So it's probably driving you crazy. We'll go ahead and fix the background color of this rounded rectangle by saying foreground color of color dot white. Now that we have the background of our app icon set, we're gonna be building on top of it. And in order to do that, we're gonna use a Z stack. So again, command click and embed in a Z stack. Now, anything that I put below the rectangle gets placed on top of that background. So if I was to say circle, you'll see that that circle is actually on top of the rounded rectangle. You'll see the icon has three rows, each with a bordered circle with a line next to it. So we're gonna start out by building one of those three. And there's a lot of different ways that we could build this circle within a circle effect, but how we're gonna do it is by starting with a circle, give it a width of 10. And so this is the first inner circle. Now, a quick note before we go any further, you'll notice that we're hard coding all of these values. So all the widths, heights, corner radius, and all that means is that this reminders app icon, it's not gonna be adaptable. And so it won't uh, adapt appropriately if we were to, let's say, give this a height or width that's not 100. At the end, we're gonna fix that and basically make it adaptable, which is a great practice. But I found that when we're building it out initially, it's much easier to use hard-coded values for quick little tweaks and changes as we build it out. And also it makes our lives much easier if we give the background, basically the app icon, height and width of a 100 because we're gonna have to convert these hard-coded values to decimals. And so if we start out with 100, it makes our lives a lot easier when we go to do that. Okay, so we have our inner circle. And what we're gonna do is we're also gonna put this in another Z stack. And then below it, we're gonna say circle and give this a stroke. So what a stroke is, is it basically removes all the inner part of the shape. Any shape can take a stroke and it also takes in a line width. So if we say one for the line width, again, we see uh, all the inside is gone and we just see the uh, outer portion of the shape with a line width of one. And now let's give this circle a frame with a width of 15. So that looks a lot better. You'll notice that I'm only giving a width to these circles. You don't have to specify a width and height. You can just do one and then it will automatically assign that value to the other. So that looks pretty good, but I think we actually need to bump this line width up to 1.5 and that looks uh, just about perfect. This circle structure looks great. Now we're gonna do the line that comes to the right of it. So because we're laying things out horizontally, left and right, we're gonna take this Z stack and embed it in an H stack. Uh, and then below, 
the circle structure that we have in the Z stack, here is where we're gonna build our line. So to do this, we're actually gonna use another rounded rectangle. So give this a corner radius of one. Uh, essentially, we're just gonna make this really short and wide to kind of look like the line effect that we see in this icon. We'll give this a width of 50 and a height of one. See how that looks. Uh, it looks just a bit too short, so let's try 1.5. That looks a lot better. Let's take care of the color by giving it a foreground color of dot gray with an opacity of 0 0.6. And then to make it just a little bit better, I found that giving it a blur with a radius of 0 0.03 just makes it look that much closer to the actual app icon. Great, so we have a single row here, and what we could do is essentially take it, copy and paste, embed this in a vertical stack, and paste it in twice. And then if we resume the preview, you'll see that we have three on top of each other, but it really jams up our content view, and what a much better practice would be is to make this reminder row uh, reusable. So let's undo that. And we can keep the V stack here, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this whole horizontal stack, which is everything that we've just created, cut that, and then come down here and create a new struct that we will call a reminder row. Conform to the view protocol, give it a body and then in the body paste exactly uh, what we just cut. So now if we were to take this reminder row and then put three of them in this V stack and then resume the preview, you'll see that we had just what we had before, but essentially it makes our uh, body in this reminders app icon much more readable and it's just a much better practice. Now from here, it's looking pretty good. The two things left essentially are just getting the colors in the circle structures that we have and then compressing it a little bit and fixing the alignment just a touch. So I'm sure the colors are again driving you crazy. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna create a property on our reminder row called color of type color. What that will do is Xcode will now tell us that the reminder row requires a color. So let's get these fixed. And the top one will just say blue. The middle one will say red. And then bottom, of course, is orange. Now, if we resume the preview again, nothing actually happens because we haven't used this color. So how we're gonna use this is we're gonna come down to our Z stack here and say foreground color of color. Now you'll notice we don't have to give this foreground color twice to both circles. If we just apply it to the Z stack, it will give each element within the Z stack this modifier. So now our preview looks great. Now for the alignment, we need to get these rows a little bit closer together. So to do that, we're gonna come up to our V stack here and we're gonna say spacing. And essentially what this does is it applies whatever space we give it to each element. So right now it's five, you'll see if we do zero, it's a little bit less, but we need to go even less than zero. So we're gonna do negative 25. And I found that to look pretty good. But if you look super closely, you'll notice that the circles actually need to be moved just a little bit to the left and the lines a little bit to the right. So if we come down to our reminder row, we can do the same exact thing and give this H stack a custom spacing and we will say 11.5. And now it's added the spacing and the line is kind of exactly where we would want it to be. But the circles, if you look super close, I think just need to be moved a little bit to the left so the way that we're gonna do that without moving the line is by applying an offset to this Z stack. So what an offset does is it takes the elements that it's being applied to 
and moves them around. So I've done 10 on the X axis and you'll see it, it has essentially moved the circles to the right by 10, but the line hasn't moved at all. So we obviously wanna move it in the opposite direction. Uh, so let's say negative one. And I think that is exactly what we want. Now to actually use this view in another view, let's go ahead and copy that, head over to our content view. Let's get rid of the placeholder text and paste in our reminders app icon. We'll give this a frame with a width of 100 and a height of 100. Hit resume and you'll notice that we don't see the background because the actual device background is white. So to fix that, let's embed this in a Z stack. Beneath it, we'll say color.gray and we will ignore the safe areas. That way we can actually see the app icon. So it looks really good. The problem, as I alluded to before, is that this is not an adaptable app icon right now. So if we were to give this a width and height of 200, it's not gonna adapt appropriately. You'll see that some aspects are moving, others are staying the same. So we're gonna fix that so that it can adapt appropriately to any size that we wanna give this app icon. So to do that, we will jump back to the reminders app icon and we're going to embed everything that's within this body in what's called a geometry reader. So take this whole Z stack here, cut it and put it in this geometry reader. Now, essentially what this geometry reader does is it reads the size that this view has been given and allows us to work with that size and use it in the way that we would want to. So right now, in the content view, we've given this uh, custom view a size of 200 width and 200 height. So this geometry reader, it's gonna give us a completion, which is essentially the size of this view. And we're gonna call that geo. And now we can use this completion uh, in our app however we want to. So to make that just a little bit easier, I'm gonna make a property, call it icon height, and set that equal to geo dot size dot height. And this is what we're gonna use to now convert these hard-coded values that we've been using into percentages of the height. So that's why I advised earlier of using uh, an initial height and width of 100 because now we can essentially just move the decimal over on these hard-coded values and be on our way. So what that looks like is we can take the icon height and say times 0 0.2 which if the height, if the icon height is 100, then it would be the, the 20. So you'll notice if we uh, restart the preview here, nothing actually changes and it's, it's looking exactly the way we want it to. The other thing to point out is we can actually get rid of this whole line of hard coding the uh, rounded rectangle. The reason is because if a rounded rectangle doesn't have an explicit width or height, uh, it will essentially just expand to take up the maximum allowable space. So in our case here, we're actually giving this reminders app icon view in explicit uh, height and width here of 200. And that's what will determine the height and width of this rounded rectangle if we don't actually explicitly give it a width and a height. Hopefully that makes sense. So carrying on, we need to uh, convert the spacing here to a percentage. So we'll say negative 0 0.25. And then if we go down to our reminder row, we can take the icon height, again, apply it here and say times 0 0.115. But if you wait a second, you'll see that Xcode doesn't like this. And that is because our reminder row doesn't have any concept of an icon height. Even though it's contained within uh, this geometry reader, this view itself doesn't know what icon height is, and that's essentially what Xcode is trying to tell us here. So the way that we can get around this is by creating a new property called icon height. We'll just call it the exact same thing, and this is of type CG float. Now Xcode is gonna very kindly tell us that we need to now add this property to our reminder rows. So let's go ahead and fix that. 
And then all we have to do is pass in this icon height so that our reminder row is aware of the size of the app icon that it's contained within. So if you command B to build, uh, this should build successfully. And then if we update our preview here, wait for that to load. Again, nothing has changed, so that's looking great. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed through the final ones. Now, once you've got those all updated, you can resume your preview and boom, it looks just like it did before. Awesome. Now for the grand finale, we're gonna jump back to our content view to see this in action. So open that up and bam. Again, with this width and height of 200, it is now looking exactly the way that you would expect it. We can even knock it down to 100 again and everything has adapted just the way that it should. If you want it a little bit more uh, accurate based on this device size, I think Apple uses a height and width of 60, something like that. And that is it. We now have the Reminders app icon built entirely in SwiftUI. It is adaptable. We can use it anywhere we want and any size that we want. If you followed along here, great work. I hope this helped reinforce some beginner level SwiftUI concepts for you and motivates you to keep learning new things and building your own ideas. This video was inspired by my friend Adam from Code Slicing. If you're ready for some more advanced level SwiftUI app icons, be sure to check out his channel where he does amazing things all using the power of SwiftUI. He builds things like the settings app icon, an Apple TV remote, and even a HomePod. It's all been fairly mind-blowing in my experience. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you next time.